Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper. Welcome back to the Gaming Lounge. Today we are going to be going over the Tier 2 Russian Cruiser Novik for our How to Play series on the Russian Cruiser line. The Tier 2 Novik was a protected cruiser built for the Imperial Russian Navy in 1900. Commissioned in 1901, she represented the most modern ship built for the Imperial Russian Navy at the time. During sea trials, Novik achieved a speed of 25 knots, which made her one of the fastest cruisers in the early 1900s, and she would serve as the basis for a class of protected cruisers that came after her. In terms of service history, Novik started life being stationed in Kronstadt, which is basically St. Petersburg, Russia, but was quickly dispatched to the Pacific in 1902 after sea trials. She rendezvoused with the battleship Imperator Nikolai I and transited the Suez Canal in December. She finally arrived in Port Arthur, Manchuria, near the Korean Peninsula, where she served as a diplomatic emissary between Russia and Japan. At the outbreak of the Russo-Japanese War, Novik would be lightly damaged during the Battle of Port Arthur, where she was able to launch a torpedo at approximately 3,000 yards towards the Japanese squadron, but failed to achieve a single hit. She would then sortie to rescue two Russian destroyers being pursued by the Japanese. In April of 1904, she sortied once more as part of the Russian fleet to engage the Japanese that were blockading the harbor, but the flagship battleship, the flagship battleship Petropavlovsk struck mines at the entrance of Port Arthur, sank, and that forced the fleet to return to Port Arthur. Two months later, Novik would unsuccessfully sortie again. In August, later, the Russian fleet would again sortie against the Japanese fleet at the mouth of Port Arthur, which resulted in the Battle of the Yellow Sea. Most of the Russian ships returned to port, but several, including Novik, escaped. She was lightly damaged and set sail for Vladivostok to meet up with the rest of the Russian navy there. She was pursued by the Japanese cruisers, Tsushima and Chitose, and was eventually trapped in the Aniva Bay, and was forced into battle. The resulting battle will be called the Battle of Korsakov, and during the battle, von Schultz, the captain, ordered the ship to be scuttled so it could not be recovered, as they had no avenue of escape. This ultimately failed to damage the ship beyond salvage, and the Japanese claimed the ship in 1905 as a prize of war. She served in the Japanese fleet as the cruiser Suzuya, until she was scrapped in 1913. In terms of in-game play style, Novik is a very fast and maneuverable protected cruiser, boasting a 25 knot top speed, as per her trials. She also has a fairly decently large number of main battery guns. Uh, they have decent rate of fire, but really poor arcs and poor accuracy, with kind of average damage and low fire chance. Overall, durability is poor, but, you know, for all of its faults, it is a Tier 2 cruiser, and the grind is... You can literally get through the Novik grind in about three battles if you if you are uh, trying hard enough. So, overall, it's an okay cruiser, uh, but this is starting a trend that we will see with some of the higher-tier Russian cruisers involving damage potential overall, as well as lack of durability. All right, let's talk about stats. She has 14,500 hit points, up to 50 millimeters of armor. The main battery consists of eight single 120 millimeter guns, 10.1 kilometer firing range, five second reload time, 17.1 second 180 degree turn time, 102 meter dispersion, 1700 HE shell damage with an eight and a half percent fire chance, which feels like about two and a half percent. AP shell damage is 2,000, and it looks like AP and HE shells have the same velocity. In terms of anti-aircraft defense, not that this matters because you really won't see any aircraft carriers in this thing. Two single 7.62 guns. Up here. <laughs> Uh, yep, gonna shoot down a lot of aircraft with those, just kidding. Max speed of 25 knots, turning circle radius of 500 meters, rudder shift time of 4 seconds. Detection range by sea of 8.8 .8 kilometers and by air of 4.0. In terms of upgrades, we only have one upgrade slot to talk about, and in this case I am running Main Armaments Mod 1, 
For the 20% reduction in the main battery being incapacitated, a 50% increase in the hit point pools of the main battery, and a 20% reduction in the re repair time of the main battery, if it were to get incapacitated. Uh, auxiliary Armaments Mod 1, not useful. We have neither AA or secondaries on this ship. And Magazine Mod 1, 70% reduction in the risk of your ship getting detonated. I suppose if this were to be your dedicated seal clubber, you could run this if you were out of detonation flags, or I'd just stick to main armaments mod 1. It really is the better of the options here. As a cruiser, it doesn't get detonated that often. So that's my recommendations. So now that we've covered the ship in port, let's go look at it in a battle video. All right, so... Novik being a tier 2 Russian cruiser uh, kind of starts us off in what can only be described as a very stereotypical way for the Russians, I guess. Uh, the ship is fast but lightly armored and does average damage. And so as a result, um, spend a lot of time kind of beating your head up against objects in frustration at times, but uh, thankfully, you know, tier two, you know, highest you'll ever see in terms of tier, like battle rating or, uh, you know, tiers to face is tier three. And at tier three, there's really not much that is going on in a match that requires a whole lot of thought. Um, my recommended tips are simple. The ship is very good at kiting is very good at charging at things. It has guns all over the place. Uh, the one thing that does kind of stink about this ship is that you do have to expose a fairly large amount of your broadside in order to actually bring all of your guns to bear on, on a side. However, it does transition quite well from side to side, which means that the rear turret and the front turret uh, well, the rear turret, for sure, rotates 360 degrees, which is super useful uh, when charging at ships. Allows you to employ your WASD hacks, your ability there to uh, constantly maneuver and fire. Now, the map is Islands, which is a quintessential low-tier map. This map and Novik, I would highly recommend going where the concentration of your friendlies is the highest, and utilizing their distraction to uh, do as much damage as you possibly can. But you're going to see several instances here in which, uh, in more accurate cruisers, you would have done significantly more damage. Can't engage anything. There's a dead ski there. Now nah, we're going to choose to shoot at the Chikuma. Mostly because the, the northern forces here require a little bit of assistance. So one nice thing about these arcs is that you can go full on the, uh, like, USN light cruiser and shoot over islands, which is kind of useful at times. And nope, no hit there. So you can see we had one shell hit on that Shikuma that did 281 damage, and that's going to be fairly standard. <laughs> Not exactly the, the highest damage output as far as uh, a light cruiser is concerned. Especially not at this tier where you have light cruisers that are significantly more useful. But it is a tier 2 and like I said earlier the grind is fairly short. So here you can see we're utilizing the smoke screen to break line of sight from us. And this is going to allow us to get some shell hits in on this South Carolina without ever actually being engaged. There we got a fire on him. And he's got a torpedo. I was kind of hoping he would uh, burn his damage control party before the torpedo hit, but you can see the rate of fire on the ship is pretty solid, but overall damage output is pretty low. <laughs> uh, South Carolina doesn't have the most superstructure armor in the whole wide world, so it's not like it's the uh, quintessential armored beast, but... Here we're going to use the islands now to break that line of sight. Oh, we got detected. That's going to be that dirt ski to the south of us. But um, we, we don't really have anything that can really effectively engage us, except for this Samson. And so we'll shoot at him. Took out his engine. Just keep working those guns. Yep, okay. Using that rate of fire as best you possibly can. The dispersion. 
pretty good salvo there, and down goes the Samson. Down goes the South Carolina as well, which means we're out of things to shoot at, so I guess we'll transition to shooting at the dirt ski before he takes out the St. Louis. Thankfully, his torpedoes ran short there, and we don't have to worry too much about that. But, um, overall tactics, you can see here, well, we've really not done much aside from using speed and distance to our advantage. And that that is... Ooh, wow, that's a lot of torpedoes coming this way. That is that is probably the ship's largest strength. And there goes there's our first kill, 9,542 damage. Not exactly setting world records here in the in tier two, but uh, overall doing doing all right so far. So transitioning to another Samson that has come around, underled him a little bit there. 481 damage is what you're going to be seeing for normal penetrating hits. Um, that does add up after a while. It was about two grand there. We talked knocked out his engine, which explains why he slowed down. And. Overall, just kind of using our speed to flex into different positions. We've, we've successfully used other ships and our team as distractions, so it's not like uh, it's not like we've been really taking a whole lot in the way of damage. Whoop! That was close. <laughs> fire there on the St. Louis, He's happily sailing in a straight line for me. Another fire on him. RNG favored me in this match. That's all I have to say about that. And gotta get around this corner because I want to keep this wicks alive if I can. Fires are still burning. Don't know where he's at. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna back up. Oop, this is V25. Oh, no wicks. Oop, down goes the St. Louis. So he's gone. Our wicks eats a torpedo. And our V25 is basically dead. That's like double strike territory for that Samson sitting in their smoke if you wanted it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start going back forward again. At this point, we really need the capture points. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to win this unless we start killing people significantly faster than we are. So we're going to go help this Dresden in the A-cap, and then we're going to proceed south. Ooh, torpedoes there from the Samson. God, those two guys are so close to dead. death. It's scary. Using our uh, our ability to shoot over islands to our favor. Almost got him. The the shell arcs really are good for this. This is not a trait that you will continue to enjoy past the low tiers. Uh, you, generally speaking, the Russian cruisers have very high muzzle velocity. This is... The uh, low tiers are an exception to that. And once you get to Moscow, you'll understand the term railgun. <laughs> as, as many other players have become to enjoy it. Uh, okay, we're going to start focusing some of our damage potential here to this Weymouth, who is there, taking guns out of the fight. And this is one one aspect that uh, is, good, good tact is a good tactic to learn early on. When you've got ships that are this low on hit points, and you've got this few cap points, and are behind on actual points themselves, there goes our second kill. It would behoove you to start focusing down ships that are low on hit points because those ships that are low on hit points, they are generally speaking going to die quicker, it takes guns out of the fight. They do just as much damage in the fight as they do outside of it. So would highly recommend focusing down ships that are low on hit points so as to um, remove those guns from the fight because if left unchecked, you can absolutely wreck face with a ship that has 400 hit points. Especially if it's a destroyer. Like, there's that Samson back there that's 2,000. Boy, we are under-leading those ships quite a bit. 22,796 damage, 3 kills, and a cap assist. We're going to sail around this island here, and then we're going to head towards the B-cap. Now, we have a Strozovoy that is... <laughs> YOLO rushing, I guess. Clearly, he uh, he got the message loud and clear to uh, rush B. <laughs> He's not rushing B currently. <clears throat> and down he goes. Unfortunately, that Strozovoy, he was spotting all of their fleet for us. Hopefully he gets that Nassau. Yes, okay, good. 
I was gonna say, man, that'd be a terrible trade to, to let yourself die that way and not at least get something out of the fight. At this point, their whole team is basically on, uh, well, retreat. Uh, we got their whole team pretty much retreating, but still down on the points. Could very easily lose this if things don't go our way. Ship-wise, you know, they've got two destroyers, one of which we know is pretty badly damaged. They've got two cruisers that are half health. And one, this Kohlberg, that is in the process of getting hit pretty hard. And here you can see we're using our arcs to shoot over the islands again as we head towards the B-cap. Now in the B-cap, we should probably expect there to be an enemy destroyer. He's not been spotted. Ah, there he is. Okay, so Pan-Asian destroyers have deep water torpedoes, but at this tier, the deep water torpedoes actually have a pretty high uh, detection range. But knowing it, most players, when they come out on an ambush like that, they are probably going to launch torpedoes pretty quickly after that. So any major maneuvers you can make shortly after... Yeah, there we go. Shortly after um, spotting them are going to help you avoid them. So in that case, we have plenty of time to successfully avoid those torpedoes. Such luxuries at this tier, they go away at other tiers. We also know he's still in the cap because I am not able to cap this one. However, they are also not getting points benefits from this cap, which means that if we can kill one of them or multiples of them, we have less to worry about. So the Samson looks like he's going down. We got Tillian. That's all the way in the back, shooting at the St. Louis, I presume. Samson is dying from unknown causes. Ooh. Okay. Wants to play up close and personal. Would not have been my choice in that destroyer, but uh, managed to escape his uh, onslaught there. We are, we are proximity spotting him. So if you're wondering what's going on here, um, he's two kilometers away from me and less than two kilometers away, and you will proximity spot most ships in the game. Actually, you'll spot every ship in the game, guaranteed. If you have, at the higher tiers, if you have other skills, you can proximity spot at further distances, but in this case, uh, the proximity spotting happens at two kilometers. Now he's being spotted by the St. Louis. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually baiting him here, so I was backing up, hoping to see a set of torpedoes. And it doesn't look like we're going to quite see them. So we'll go back around this side. We're going to cap this, though, because, uh, well, we need the points. <laughs> this, this battle has been pretty close this entire time. Oops, Samson out there with 10, no, 107 hit points. It'd be nice to, uh, nice to finish him off. But... As you can see here, we, we kind of taken this match. We've only taken a little bit of damage this entire match, and it's because we pretty much used our team to uh, exhaustion there as far as uh, you know who, who we're going to let tank the damage. Okay, we got the cap. We're detected again. And that's, that's going to be the Samson down in the south who's going after the St. Louis, which is kind of suicide. It's suicide even for a full health one, unless the St. Louis isn't paying attention at all. But at this juncture, uh, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can't engage the St. Louis. So, wing. Mm, nope, we're gonna keep focusing on the St. Louis because he's nearly dead, and not going to have any problems with this Frawling. Yeah, he's about to die here too. Okay, so continuing to engage the St. Louis, who started on fire. Uh, AP, you've not seen me use AP on this ship, and that's mostly because the AP on any of these ships is really not all that useful. Uh, it just doesn't do enough in terms of damage to really justify it. Oh my goodness, I really thought that was going to be a kill. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there's our fourth kill, 32,000, 26 damage. Fra Ruang is being spotted proximity-wise by the St. Louis, who should quite easily finish him off. Man, talk about a, a, a battle to the bitter end at Tier 2, Tier 3. <laughs> Jeez. So I finished up with four kills and predominantly employed, uh, you know, kiting tactics. 32,029 damage, four kills, some fires, one cap, one cap assist. Top of the team, 1,313 base XP. 
And there's the credits and XP screen. Anyway, overall, Novik is a very, very brief grind. Wouldn't hesitate to, uh, you know, power through it, even if you don't really enjoy the ship. There are ships in this in the Russian cruiser line that are worth it, so hang in there. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching.